I'm guessing this is the reason why you're here, but have you ever been in Premiere or After Effects or whatever it may be, and you're putting your photos into your timeline and it just keeps freezing? Playback speed is jittery, slow, annoying. I've got a fix for you. Stay tuned and let's get into it. Let me take the friction from your and I will love you, girl. So super short video today, uh, I'm just gonna talk about proxies. So what a proxy ultimately is, is we invest our money to buy these nice cameras that can do awesome things. Even down to iPhones now, you get ProRes. Well, I'm not gonna talk about ProRes because ProRes is actually quite a good codec. We've got H.264 and 265 formats in, in videos now. And ultimately a massive 4K file with those codecs on will make your computer run slow ultimately, especially whilst editing. So a proxy is a smaller version of that. Some cameras can shoot proxies at the same time it's recording the H.265, H.264, whatever it may be. But sometimes they take away functionality. So some people after recording will then create proxies, like I said, the smaller version, let's say a 720 version that will allow your computer to process it. So what will ultimately happen is You've taken that big, massive, great looking shot. You use a proxy whilst record, whilst they're editing and your computer will read that 720 timeline. Now, as you cut and replace and add on colors and all that stuff, all it's doing is doing it to that main file so that it can work. But the, the bigger proxy file is getting that same treatment or will get that same treatment behind the scenes once you're done and ready to export. Now, it hasn't really been said on what you can do with photo uh, proxies, which I've definitely not seen online. So hopefully, you know, people start to understand this and, and use this workaround and use this tool. And it's really simple to do guys, really, really simple. I'm pretty much speaking to my street photographers. This is where I found a lot of kickback and a lot of problems. Um, I use a Sony a7R4 compressed. It spits out 60 megabyte or megapixel files, which is, which is huge in comparison to 4K or 1080 or whatever it may be, it's, it's massive. So when you put that into a timeline, that's what slows it down. Even 24 megapixel images are a lot bigger than 4K too. So yeah, you get where I'm going with this. Anyway, here's the trick. What you wanna do is you wanna go into export. What I would do is if you've just done a specific shoot that you want to put these photos into, I would create a, a separate folder just so you don't confuse yourself with your normal exporting library. So what I'll do is I'll create one here and I'll call it test. Now the name and source formatting is super important. Personally, I like to have my date, my time, and that's hour, minute, seconds. I've also got the camera name on there and then I've got the custom text. So what you're gonna do is make sure that all of these things are the same because later on we're going to be overwriting these files. So I'll leave it as Sunset Ipswich because that doesn't really matter. Where I had a load of hiccups before and I used to get so stressed out, I used to think that dropping the quality was the problem. So I thought, Maybe if the, the, the megabytes are lower, then it's gonna just, it'll be fine. But that didn't do anything. My Premiere timeline still kept on choking on these picture images or pi ugh, picture images. What am I talking about? Where you wanna actually go to is resize to fit. So turn this on, hit this drop down, and you want to go down to percentage. Now that percentage, as you can see, I've already set down mine to, mine to 30 whatever that may be, 20, the lower the better, put it that way. But just bear in mind that the lower the better, the worse your images are going to look pixel wise. So not too, too low, but I'll leave it at 20 for this example. And hit export. I didn't realize that I had 81 files, but this is an M1 Mac, so it should go quick anyway. It's going pretty quick. So let's go to the file, gone into my export folder and I will just find that test folder, for example. The size of these photos are gonna be drastically smaller just because that's the nature of the game, what you're doing. I'm gonna open up Premiere Pro all at the same time. When these M1 Macs are actually working, they're, they're lovely. It's just mine that's had problems, but when I do things like this, it definitely helps out the, the work process. So I'll go into Ipswich Vlog, for example. I don't know why I named it that, because it was more so about the, the M1 Mac, but head over to section here. I'll put over an adjustment layer and I'll simply grab a whole bunch of photos. Let's just say we grab 
that amount, 68 of them, and I'll pop them right here. Now, here is an important part of this hack. I've usually got my loop deck and I don't have it right now, so I have to do it manually, which is good so that you guys can see it. But you wanna highlight all of these, right? Right click and you wanna scroll down. Make sure you scale to frame size, not set to frame size. Set to frame size will basically manipulate the photo so as, as what it is to put it where you want it. Whereas scale frame to size will scale it to the, the end of the frame so that may be a 4K timeline or whatever it may be. And then it will keep the, oh, let's do it. Let's, let's activate and I'll show you. So scale frame to size. So it's going to the top of the page and the bottom of the page full width, I'm gonna select one of them and you'll see that over here on video, the scale is at 100. If you took the other option, then the scale might be 16.5 or 97.2 and then you're gonna have inconsistency. My Mac's been popping loads. When I do that, it, it drastically stops those problems and allows me to edit a lot smoother, a lot nicer, a lot more comfortably. So you asked the question, Marv, you, you lowered the, the resolution of these photos, they're not gonna come out as rich as as they could do. Maybe, uh, for example, recently I've been shooting 4K intro like what I'm doing now and my bit, uh, megabits per second, um, I'm exporting now at 70, for example, and you're just not gonna get that same depth and I don't know if that, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I don't know if that'll make a massive difference, but you're not gonna get that same quality out of the image that you took it on in the first place. So you want all of that back, right? The next step, and, and that's why it was so important to have the scale set to, hang on, let me read it first before I start saying that. Scale to frame size, that was the important bit. So after you've set up your video and the photos are all in position to where you want them to be, head back into Lightroom, right? Go to export them all again, right? So you're gonna go to export, not export previous, all of the settings at the top are the same, so same subfolder, same text, same quality, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take off the resize to fit. So then you can set the quality wherever you want it to be. The, the actual resolution of the photos, like pixel wise, are gonna be the same, and or the original, or whatever you edited them at, and that's just the quality, basically. The quality of those pixels. So after you hit export, it will ask you if you want to, or make sure that your settings allow this. I'm not gonna go into that. You can find it in the library. Go to export settings and just make sure that you've got overwrite checked. So as soon as they overwrite all of those images, save your project, or you probably should have saved it beforehand, but save your project, close it if you have to, reopen your project, and you will find that all of your high resolution photos are in place, you don't have to resize them and you can ultimately export your, your um, video now and you don't have to worry about editing with, with those problems. If you've got an M1 Mac that actually works, then you don't even need to hear this really. Um, but if you just wanna, I don't know, take it a bit easier on your machine, then 100% this will help you out. Um, I wish I put this video out sooner because I've been battling for for a couple of years now with this, not to say that I put out many street photography videos, but I always used to wonder how people like David Wallace could just pump out videos and not be bothered by it. I, I'm always bothered by slow performance when putting photos into my timeline, even on this M1 Mac. So I hope that's a nice, useful tip and trick for you. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you leave me a thumbs up Make sure you drop a comment to let me know if you're having any difficulties. Of course, please hit the subscribe button for more future content, and I'll speak to you in a bit. Peace. I'm so late. It's unreal. Shit.